uh, Bob Nightingale in his latest column had some interesting comments connected to former Astros manager, Dusty Baker. Um, I'm going to read you this quote because I, I think this chunk of, of text here is, uh, is interesting. I'll put it on the screen. Um, quote, it was the constant media criticism and interference from the Astros analytics department that ultimately led Dusty Baker to retire as manager after last season. Well, after enduring their worst start in 55 years, the Astros now are recognizing just how much they miss the future Hall of Famer. Baker was a master with a calming influence when times were rough, leading the Astros to the American League Championship Series in each of his four seasons with a World Series title and two AL pennants. The Astros sure could use his influence now. So, gents, I, a lot to unpack from that, um, and and we'll we'll do that here. But right off the bat, I guess I want to know, Charlie, are, are you buying that Dusty got ran off by the baseball nerds? Well, look, uh, a lot of layers to go with here. Uh, Bob Nightingale is a really good baseball writer, but uh, who exactly on the record or off has suggested the Astros, boy, we're really missing Dusty. We started 7-19 and because we don't have Dusty's firm hand uh, steering the ship. You know, Joe Espada is like a substitute teacher. We're all firing off spitballs and showing up late for class and there's no discipline. Where, where's any of that? The Astros have played garbage baseball, injuries to the rotation, multiple hitters who've just been awful. I mean, was Dusty Baker Alex Bregman's personal binky? I mean, come on. Alex Bregman has been sorry so far this season, right? Mr. Slow starts, never like this. One game left in April, Alex Bregman, 555 OPS, 216 batting average, Mr. Pop Fly, Weak rollover ground ball, um, lazy fly ball to right field. Is that because Dusty Baker's not here? Uh, Chaz McCormick is he? Is he just have a like berry berry scurvy level of banana pudding deficiency? And that's why Chaz McCormick has an OPS of six oh three and has been a terrible player. Um, look. Dusty, beloved figure within the game, very, very distinguished career, ultimately probably going to go into the Hall of Fame as a manager. But let's call Crapola on one narrative that every time Dusty leaves a team, that team goes right down the toilet. <laughs> Dusty Baker, when he left the San Francisco Giants, the next year, the Giants won more games. In 2002, as a wild card, they got in and went to the World Series. Um lost it to the Angels, a series they blew at a 6-1 lead, leading 3-2 in game six, blew it, then lost game seven. Am I putting that on Dusty? No, but that Dusty left, and that's why the Giants collapsed? BS. They won 101 games under Felipe Alou the next season. So people thinking, Dusty, oh, he's he's the, the panacea that cures all. While Felipe Alou is an idiot, I thought Felipe Alou was a pretty respected guy. Uh, Dusty Baker, Chicago Cubs, his last season with the Cubs, they went 66 and 96. The Cubs got worse after that? Stop this. Cincinnati Reds. Okay, they fell off. You know what? If you're, if you're going to a, a gunfight, don't bring a knife. I'm ready. Dusty Baker's last season with the Reds, they had three stud offensive players. The, at that point, great Joey Votto. Uh, the outfielder, Shin Su Chu. And uh, now Astros spring training staff, or at least uh, Jay Bruce, shout out Beaumont. Well, the season after Dusty left, Shin Su Chu was gone. The Texas Rangers gave him an idiotic free agent contract. Joey Votto missed 100 games injured, and Jay Bruce collapsed. I mean, maybe Jay Bruce was an emotional wreck because Dusty left as the manager. I mean, scratch at least a little below the surface on this garbage. Then the Washington Nationals. Yeah, when Dusty left the year after they took a step back, the year after that, they won the World Series. I believe Houston <laughs> specifically recalls that in 2019. So that if Dusty leaves, organizations become instantly will be gone. But this would be the first if the Astros are going to go on to be 59 and 103. And if that's the case, it's not because Dusty left. It's because overall team performance went glug, glug, glug. I thought the other funny part was saying that he left because of the media 
and because of pressure from the Astros analytics team, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm like, he wasn't listening to those guys. He wasn't listening to Dana Brown telling him to play Diaz. He was saying, no, we're rolling. We're rolling with Maldi. I don't care how terrible he is as a hitter. And we're going to keep a Bray, you bat and clean up or fifth for the whole season, even though he's ninth worst OPS in all of baseball. So it doesn't seem like much pressure from the Astros analytics department since Dana Brown has said that the lineup was dusties, that the managers make those calls and all the analytics decisions that were being pushed on him. He looked the other way. So I don't see how that would have been a reason to leave. And because he gets questions about Chaz McCormick and pudding and, you know, basically he's just getting treated like a, a manager in any other bigger media market. It's pretty tame in Houston. If you can't handle the heat in Houston, Texas, this is not for you. So I think a lot of this stuff with Nightingale, like, are these just your opinions or, or are these based on anything? I, I buy that it wore on Dusty, right? The the analytics guys, these mosquitoes always buzzing and giving me this data point and that data point. And Dusty was always one to point out, you know, I valued numbers going back before it was called analytics, not at the depth, certainly, that they've evolved to in, in this era of baseball. Um, and while he had autonomy to make that lineup out and obviously fully used it, just that every day, you know, he felt like they were just flicking him in the head or his ear just annoying him with why hey give give this some thought or how about that leave me alone uh but just to double down on where josh is on the meat the notoriously vicious houston media rather than if dusty was just old and tired and you know what at 74 years old if that was the case understandable that he was harassed and beleaguered dusty baker was run off because of media criticism please if true that's just weak. And if Dusty no longer had the stomach for it, he was smart to retire. Uh, you know, the, and I guess before I get into my other point here was, you know, let's look at what the calming hand of Dusty, you know, really did. I mean, it's, it's not like he walked into a team and turned it around. He came after a sign stealing scandal cost Houston, both their manager and GM, but they had just been eliminated they came out of a really tough World Series, a Game 7 of a World Series. So um, how did they finish with the calming force of Dusty coming in? Well, they finished under 500 in that COVID-shortened season and went down 0-3 in the ALCS to the Rays, which they, you know, to their credit, came back and forced a Game 7, but they didn't. Uh, to show, Dusty's like, credit, Brandon. To Dusty's what's that? Credit. To Dusty's credit, they rallied. To Dusty's full All credit. credit. Resolve and, and leadership. To Dusty's full credit, and literally not the players one bit, but it's just it's just interesting that you know right. players fault when they fall behind. Dusty's magic touch when things go well. Yeah, and and look, we we've, we've read also that Dusty vetoed at least one trade uh, by James Click, and you know by all circumstantial evidence it appears as if james click lost a power battle to dusty baker and maybe that uh you know think tank of uh you know retired players that now seems to be dominating the front office decisions at least if you believe uh what reggie jackson says um but one of the things i i do want to i do want to give um i, I want to give a thought to this i want to get your your guys opinions on this one of the things that we attributed to dusty was the incessant use of jake myers in spite in you know kind of in spite of performance in spite of results they kept running jake myers out there we thought that was a dusty bundled into an anti Chaz mccormick thing that's that's kind of the narrative was that dusty didn't like Chaz, and that's one of the things that was attributed to uh chandler rome was that chandler rome had talked to people on the inside they said dusty had something against Chaz. well so you go okay well dusty bounces it's a clean slate. You can do whatever you want to. Well, one of the first thing Joe Spot announces is that they're going to play uh, Jake Myers out in center field. So we thought we were going to see Chaz McCormick play there full time. Nope, they're going to put Chaz McCormick. So, like, kind of looking back at that now, what do we think that that was a dusty thing, or do we think some of those decisions were being pressured by? a greater analytics department. And maybe that was a concession that Dusty Baker was making. 
Well, certainly on the analytics side, they have been steadfast that Jake Myers is absolutely their best overall defensive center fielder and still give him a chance to hit. And if he's at the bottom of the lineup, he'll net out as a, as a positive. Well, he's just never been able to sustain enough offense to net out as a positive. And it's why McCormick wanted to play more center field and Dubon emerged as, as an alternative. Uh, I will say, in Dusty's behalf, the two things. One, he was a terrific handler of people, just a very interesting man who guys like talking with and and playing for. Um, and I also think it is natural when you are the manager, the areas of which you have control, and if someone is telling you, do this, do this, do this, and not only do you not have to do this, you disagree with this, you're going to lean to that. Right, even if it's not necessarily the clear better option, it's not, no one likes to be told what to do. Um, and if you have genuine strength in your convictions, right, even if those convictions are wrong, um, I think most people in that type of spot are going to say, "I'm going to Sinatra here, my way." Right, this this is my call. Uh, Espada, when he pulled Verlander. 95 pitches at Wrigley Field. Justin Verlander acutely aware of his place in history. I'm chasing 300 wins. What do you mean you're taking me out too? I'll get out of this. Let me qualify for the win. But Espada, hey, we're playing the long game here. And even with the Astros, a mess. You know, and each game feels more important than it otherwise would the end of April when you're 7 and 18 or whatever they were at, at, at that time. Um, but it's, taking Verlander out is the right decision this rookie manager goes out and pulls the 41 year old surefire hall of famer because he felt that was the right thing to do right agree or disagree credit a spotter for doing what he felt was the right thing to do and i think dusty was in similar vein but i do think a little bit of it also became personal for dusty don't tell me to stay off your lawn i'm the old guy here you get the hell off my lawn I think the Myers stuff may be coming from the Astros analytics department's interesting, Brandon. I also, it was one of our concerns that we had a little bit, right, with the Espada hiring. I think we were all happy with it, but we also knew, like, this is going to be kind of Dana Brown's guy. Like, what Dana wants to get done, Espada is probably going to do that for him, right? That, that was one of the concerns, that maybe he'd be kind of a yes man, happy to get the opportunity, whatever you need me to do, Dana, you know, I'll, I'll be your eyes and ears you know, on the field and to see that they, they push Myers early in the year, but what did Espada do very early in the season when they started Myers and then Myers was coming up to the plate late in games, Espada was pinch hitting for him and taking him out in, in some critical situations. So it makes you wonder if, yeah, there is a little bit from the front office going, yeah, Jake Myers, Jake Myers, but when it's on the field and it it's important time, win or lose the ball game, the manager's going, nah, get him out of there. And but Singleton sometimes was the option that was coming in for him to pinch hit. You know, I guess they just love that righty-lefty matchup. That's something that's, man, that Astros stick to that. Espada seems to love it. So, yeah, I think it's interesting. Maybe there is a little bit of push for Jake Myers from the front office when Dusty was there and with the Spada. And then when it comes to having to win a ball game, he's finding himself on the bench. And uh, just in terms of branching out, and Loper Fido gets the, the call up this week because beyond all reasonable doubt at this point, Abreu's washed up. Right? He's washed up until or unless he proves otherwise. Chaz McCormick was a really good player last year. Really, really good. Jake Myers was not. Jake Myers this, so far this season is not. Where is the timeline on those guys? Right And, and Sugarland, AAA stats, be a little sketchy in terms of valuing them. But Pedro Leon's been strong. There's a guy the Astros spent millions on, signing him out of Cuba. Slow trip up through the minors. But 25 years old now. I mean, if you're looking to shuffle the deck a little bit, get a little energy infusion, maybe run into someone who gets off to a hot start offensively, can Pedro Leon creep onto the radar as an outfield option? Because Dubon, as the Swiss Army knife, is stellar. But he starts the week as a sub-700 OPS guy, right? Last year in his career year, he was a 720 OPS guy. The upside is limited on Mauricio Dubon's offense. So I'm not clamoring for Pedro Leon to get to the major leagues, but at some point, what's going to hurt? 
no, completely. Uh, and I look, it's you know, Josh going back to your point. It's it's tough for me to even say that Joe Espada is Dana Brown's guy, or because I I don't know how much power and autonomy Dana Brown really has as a decision maker within this organization. And not that we know anything, obviously not, but like we're just judging off of context of optics and statements that we're getting from the front office. But if I'm playing devil's advocate, Dusty even pitch hit for Jeremy Pena in the postseason uh, in in the previous year. And I don't think that was an indictment on him as a player. It just was like this kid could not, you know, uh, hit the broad side of a barn. So in, in a situation which they needed wins, they they did pinch it for him. So I, I can drop Tucker way in the lineup too when he was scuffling. With yeah, exactly. So, and again, I don't think that's an indictment of, of the players necessarily or their, their trust in the players. It's just like they, it's a admission that they're scuffling and they need a win, especially in the postseason. But I do want to soften my preceding snark by just saying I admit 100% Dusty Baker is deservedly a Hall of Famer. He deserves a ton of credit for what he did in 2022 pushing all the right buttons i'm on record and maintain the opinion that they do not win a world series in 2022 without dusty baker being a part of that chemistry uh that helped them do it i i think um we've seen it now with two championships everything has to fall in your flavor or favor you have to get a lot of lucky bounces and a lot of times it is like those decisions that get made there's that one in 2019 that didn't get made that we all look at and i don't think we we uh or at least at least we can't say in 2022 that there were any of those decisions that you go man if only they had did x uh dusty baker got the Astros maybe their most important championship which was the one that revalidated 17 so uh i i just want to I'm not a dusty hater by any means. I just think this comment um, from uh, Bob Nightingale appears to be a defense of maybe the guy who was kind of his inside source while he was managing in Houston. Gents, I'll give you the final word before we go. Um, I understand it. Right, People like clarity, hero versus villain, good versus bad. But baseball manager performances aren't binary, right? You push buttons. If they work, you're a mastermind. You push buttons. They don't work. You're a dunce. It's just, it's just way too simplistic. And in the end, with specific rare exceptions, it's about the player performance. Right? In 2019, we don't know with absolute certainty if A.J. Hinch leaves Granky in a little bit longer or goes to Garrett Cole out of the pen, that it's over. The Astros absolutely win that World Series. Right? It seems highly probable, certainly infinitely more likely than how it played out, going to a seemingly close to, if not spent, Will Harris. But even with that, Will Harris gives up a ball to Howie Kendrick that slices and hits the foul pole in the corner, barely a home run. Um, sometimes things just don't work out. Bad decisions... Well, we fell into that one in a good way. Good, well-thought-out decisions. If the players don't deliver, is that in the end on the manager? Yes, in terms of we judge results and the one-loss record is, is their resume. Um, that's it. <laughs> For me, I think all this stuff from Nightingale, a lot of this is about timing right now because I think it's part of what you said, Brandon. I think he probably was one of his sources. But I also think Astros, I mean, he writes for the media, right? Astros are scuffling. Dusty Baker's going and, and receiving his Lifetime Achievement Award the same week. And so, I mean, it's kind of convenient timing to be like, here's Dusty getting his Lifetime Achievement Award. The Astros are, you know, historically terrible this year without him. Maybe this is a good time to talk about the Astros and Dusty a little bit and, and get some page views. 
Uh, indeed, we'll close it there. That's another episode of Stone Cold Shows in the books. If you enjoyed the show, uh, please hit like on the video. If you're watching on YouTube and if you're listening on podcast, consider giving us a five-star rating and review us. Uh, Charlie, Josh, and I will be back here next week, but you don't have to wait that long to get your Houston sports fix. All you have to do is subscribe to this channel, Sports Map Houston, and our sister channel, Sports Map Texans, to get all the latest Astros and Texans coverage. Maybe one day, some Rockets coverage. Uh, one day. Uh, but until then, go Astros. Oh, I said that wrong. Shit. Go Astros. <laughs>